Welcome to part 20. In the last video, um, I was working through the jQuery functionality, uh, specifically related to color box. And we had this so far, but I'm going to go back to uh, Google Chrome for a second and take a look at the color box um, documentation here. Obviously, you can go through it in a little bit more detail, and uh, you can always download the files and look at the sample files that uh, the zip file includes. But if you scroll down the page a little bit, it talks about the various different options that this uh, color box plugin allows us to use. We're going to be using a couple different ones here. Um, setting the transition, um, we'll be setting the href value because we want this page to pop up immediately on page load. So it's not going to be associated with a, a element or anything like that. Um, and then a couple other things, um, for example, inner height and uh, it, here we go, initial width and initial height, um, scrolling, um, and opacity. And just to, as a quick reminder, opacity, if you go to our demonstration, um, this is the effect that we'll be using. The opacity refers to the opacity behind the color box. So let's switch back to Coda, and I'm going to start putting these in place. Um, first one is transition, transition, excuse me. And I'm going to use fade, and I'm going to use um, initial width. And I'm going to set that to 50 pixels. and also initial height. And I'll set scrolling to false, the opacity to 0.6. Um, that varies, it goes between zero, which is perfectly transparent, and one, which is completely opaque. And then finally, the href. And this is going to be the value of the URL which this color box is going to show. And in this case, I'm going to use a little bit of PHP here. So I'm going to open up and close my PHP tags. And I'm going to echo out the site path. Like so. And then after the site path, I'm going to include app slash login.php. And I'll save this. And um, as a quick note, the reason why I'm doing this within script tags rather than in a completely external JavaScript file is I want to make sure that we can use PHP and we can access this site path variable. Um, as I said earlier, the t underscore login.php file will be included within the actual uh, website. So we can't really be sure exactly where in the website it'll be included or what path um, that particular page this file is included in um, is. So that's why I'm setting things to an absolute path and I'm keeping it within the login.php file so I can access this variable. So I believe that should be good. Um, let me go ahead and open up index.php and preview this. And it looks like we're currently getting all sorts of error messages. But the simple fact that this is displaying is a good sign. Um, let me try taking this off. And notice we'll get the website displaying as it should. And if you click the link down here at the bottom, you get this to appear. Um, and also, let me refresh this page. What you see when this uh, pop-up first appears is you see this little black box in the center of the screen with a loading GIF. So let me hit refresh. Um, that the size of that box is determined, if I go back to t-login, by the initial width and the initial height. So setting it to 50 pixels each um, gives it a small square box that expands then into the full login window. Um, but now, obviously we have some issues to deal with if we're getting all sorts of errors, and that's due to the fact that we are trying to access um, this v under or actually no this uh, login.php file and it's trying to include files that no longer exist so that's going to be our first step um, to remove these and to tweak this layout in order to get it working 
the first step in that process is actually an include. So I really shouldn't have included that or deleted that previous line. Um, so we, what we need to include is our main init.php file. And needs quotes around it. So um, keep in mind that what we're working with here is login.php, this file. So it's in the same folder as init. So we don't have to worry about path changes. However, we do need to work our way through this file and make some changes. Um, for example, there's no longer a template object like this. We need to access it like this, fp template. So most of these changes are pretty simple, but uh, I'm going to quickly go through them. Oh, that looks good. Basically, any time where the template object is accessed, we need to change it and make sure it's referring to the template object within the flight path um, core object. And same thing with authorization. So here we go. Okay, and I believe we're good so far. So um, we also need to make some additional changes here. Um, for example, down at the bottom, we need to load our view, um, but specifically we need to load app path dot core slash views v underscore login. Um, if we're doing a successful login, we need to change some things. Um, this looks good so far, but instead of doing an alert, we want the user to be logged in directly. So what we're going to do is we're going to log in, excuse me, we're going to load a new file. So I'm going to access that fp template load. I'm going to load the file within app path dot core views, and I'm going to create a new view for this. I'm going to call it um, v underscore logging in dot php. And what I found is that um, Colorbox needs a temporary page to display until the page completely refreshes. And I'll explain this in a couple minutes. But um, this is what I need to do so far. So that's good. Um, invalid login, we do need to set an alert, so that's correct. Um, but we also need to get color box to resize because what's going to happen, um, actually maybe I should wait on this and show you, actually demonstrate this. So I'll leave that for the moment. Um, but let's go ahead and make sure we're loading the correct view here. So at path dot core views v underscore login. Um, and I believe everything else in this file is good. There isn't too much that I need to change. I mean, the core functionality is in place. Um, <clears throat> and I guess same thing here. At path, core slash views. Okay. So let me save this. And uh, let's do a quick preview just to see where we are. So it looks like we're here. Um, I must have missed a template, line 36. Yeah, here we go. There we go. So we have a login window and um, I'm going to be working on styling it a little bit in the next video, but uh, you can definitely see that we're making some progress.